Welcome back to another episode of my Precision Health Optimization channel, where I share and break down science on health optimization, anti-aging, prevention in easy, understandable words so that you can uh, um, use them in your day to day and become the CEO of your health. Now, today I want to talk about ketosis. Like intermittent fasting in my previous episode, it is a topic that is uh, used and talked about a lot in the last five years or decade because there was a lot of amazing re research that shows that it has great health benefits. Now, as the longer we've done it, they realized that actually there are ketosis is great if done in short amounts, in intermittent amounts, but if it's done too long, it can actually cause trouble, damage, and people run into problems. And research has shown that, but also I've seen it in my patients, I've seen it in myself, because us humans, we see something as good, so then we go and go all in, we overdo it, and uh, that is actually not a good thing with ketosis. With ketosis, same as with fasting, it's all about the, the dosage that makes the poison or the potion. And um, today I want to talk a little bit more about the benefits of doing ketosis right, and also about the pitfalls if ketosis isn't done right. So ketosis, if it's done right and intermittently, it has lots of tremendous health benefits. One of it is that it can increase insulin sensitivity. Now, um, if you followed me in other on my other channels, you might know that insulin, or you've read it somewhere else, is that insulin resistance is linked to metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, cancers, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, lots of issues, increased circumference around the waistline, that um, inflammatory belly fat. So we want ourselves to not be insulin resistant, but sensitive. Now, because we drop our sugar intake, if we are in a ketogenic state, our cells become more insulin sensitive because they're craving any kind of energy and sugar that comes their way because they think they're starving. If ketosis is done intermittently, because on the contrary, if it's done too long, research shows that our cells then actually become more insulin resistant. So that is not good. We want to do it. We want to keep our cells really um, something called metabolically flexible, where they can use glucose and sugars and carbohydrates when we fuel it us with them, but also be able to then become really insulin sensitive and switch over to ketone bodies when we are low in sugars. So what actually is ketosis and how do we get into it? Now our body, if we don't fuel it with glucose and sugars, it starts to produce something called ketones, which are um, one of them is called beta hydroxybutyrate. It's the main one. There's also one called acetate, but the one that has most health benefits seems to be the beta hydroxybutyrate. Um, so, but we won't talk about all those fancy words all the time. So I'll just call it our ketones. Now, if there's a drop in sugar and carbohydrate intake, even healthy carbohydrates and sugars like fruit and um, sweet potatoes and um, quinoa, things like that. Our body, if we drop that enough, our body will start to think it doesn't get enough fuel and it will start to produce ketones. And it, it does that by uh, burning fat. Now, if we don't have a lot of fat in our circulating through the bloodstream because we haven't just eaten a ton of it, it will burn our own stored fat. So that is really good um, in the short term. It helps us burn excess amounts of fat. It also helps to lower inflammation. If we have a layer of excess fat, it that is inflammatory. So reducing that has been shown to lower inflammation. It also has been shown these ketone bodies have been shown to burn really clean for energy. Now that can lead to increased focus and cognitive functioning that can also um, lead to increased energy. What it also does ketosis is it stimulates our mitochondria. Now you might remember that from biology class, our mitochondria are our energy producing engines that we have in pretty much all of our cells. And they're really important to, to function for the whole body because they produce our energy. Now, if we give it ketones as a fuel source, it actually burns that fuel much cleaner and produces less smoke, less fumes, actually called free radicals. Now, these free radicals, if we have too many of them and not enough antioxidants to quench them, can lead to cellular damage, aging, mutations, which happens all the time, all the time um, in our body, but we then need to clean it out through processes called apoptosis and autophagy, which are 
program cell death and cellular renewal. So basically, we all have mini mutations, we have mini can precancerous cells, we have old worn out cells all the time. But our body, if, if we're in a good balance, and we're healthy, then our body can take care of them, they clean them out, we can program, um, there's this program cell death that takes them out and makes sure that there's space for fresh new cells. Now, ketosis has been shown to upregulate this autophagy and apoptosis via processes that are have fancy words, but I'm just going to throw them in quickly because some of you might have known them and then you can connect the dots. There are certain processes called sirtuins and uh, AMPK and um, FOXO3, but also NAD+. So all of these fancy words, what they do is they increase cellular renewal and um, get rid of old worn out cells and intermittent ketosis, much like intermittent fasting has been shown to upregulate these processes. So that's great news. Because on the other hand, like I mentioned before, if we are burning ketones for fuel rather than glucose, we even produce less free radicals. So there are less cells that are damaged, worn out, um, have less damage. So we it should be a nice balance. Also, there should be more of that NAD plus that I mentioned before, which helps to keep that in balance as well. So overall, intermittent ketosis has been shown to be um, great for reducing overall aging, age-related disease, decline, um, cellular damage, and increase aging. Being in an intermittent state of ketosis has also been shown to actually improve our metabolic profile. So that means that if we're doing blood testing and people have done keto intermittently for a while, research shows that their triglycerides go down, their LDL cholesterol, the bad type potentially goes down, the HDL cholesterol, the good type goes up. So it, if we do it the right way, it actually has really beneficial benefits on our um, metabolic profile, our blood profile cholesterol. Now you might think, how does that happen? Doesn't cholesterol come in fatty foods, and that will spike our cholesterol in the blood if we are going keto. That is something that I see that question comes up a lot in my patients and on my online platforms. Now, research shows actually, um, so they used to think that that's true, but research over the past decade actually shows that our dietary intake of fats and cholesterol has not that much to do with our blood cholesterol levels. Now, unless you are have a genetic mutation where that is directly linked, and then you might have to make some changes, but that is really rare. So actually, for most people, dietary cholesterol has not much to do with our cholesterol in the body. And reason being is that we actually need cholesterol in the body. We need it as a precursor for sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Um, so we want to make sure we have enough of it. But we also need it for cell membranes and functioning of everything. So our body actually makes cholesterol even if we're not eating it. And it gets upregulated, that production of cholesterol inside our liver gets upregulated if we're high in insulin, which happens when we're eating a ton of sugars and carbs. It also gets upregulated if we are inflamed, if there's a lot of free radical damage. So if someone has high cholesterol levels, and they're on a balanced diet, but they're overdoing sugars, carbs, there might be something, there might be chronic infections that are leading to inflammation. Um, and that could also increase the body to produce more cholesterol. So actually a ketogenic diet, if it's well formulated and done intermittently has been shown to lower cholesterol levels and lower inflammation, lower free radical damage. So it actually helps with our, like I said before, our metabolic profile, our blood lipid panel. Unless you're doing dirty keto, you're overdoing fat bombs, you're eating um, bad type of fats all the time. So there are some people that just because it became so trendy, people were just jumping on that keto wagon, and they were starting to eat tons of fats, cutting out all their vegetables, we'll get to that in a second, how they are linked to it as well, cutting out all vegetables, because they had some type of carbs in it, were eating tons of just nonstop um, fat, seeing that as an excuse to eat junk food, inflammatory oils, what that then does, if you're eating inflammatory oils, and excess amounts of food overall, it increases your palmitic acid, increases inflammation in the brain, in our cells, and that then actually does increase our cholesterol. So if you're just using keto as a um, free fall for 
eating a chunk food diet, chunk fats, that is not how it works. So I'm talking about a well formulated whole foods diet with good fats from salmon, from olive oil, things like that, real foods, non processed, and a good balance of omega threes and omega sixes is not really a topic for today. But just briefly, we they're both fats, and they're both important for our cells for our functioning. But if we are in an imbalance of omega threes and sixes, we are we tend to be more inflamed more inflamed because we need omega threes to do something called resolution where it calms down our immune system and stops inflammation from happening too much. Now, if we eat too many omega sixes or other inflammatory foods, then even though we're in a keto state, it could still be inflammatory and increase um, cholesterol production because that's our body's way of dealing with it. But Going back to the initial point was that if we're lowering our sugar intake, we also lower our internal production of cholesterol because we lower insulin. Now, another great benefit of being in an intermittent state of ketosis is that it, even if you're lowering our, so normally when we go on a diet, we're trying to reduce our caloric intake so that we can burn more energy than we are intaking and burning stored fat, we get really hungry because our ghrelin, our hunger hormone goes up. Now, research shows that if we are going into a ketogenic state and we are lowering our caloric intake um, to burn more fat for fuel, we're less likely to have it have that spike of ghrelin. So our satiety stays higher. So it's much easier on us to be in a calorie def deficit and burn some of that if there's excess fat to be burned. So it makes it much easier to stick to a diet. Also being in a ketogenic state usually means that we're not eating a ton of sugars and carbohydrates. And um, you might have heard of something called glycation, which is when we eat sugars, um, carbohydrates, they turn into something called glucose inside our body. And we need some of it, we'll get to that later. So I don't want you to be in a keto state nonstop, in, um, but intermittently. But if we overdo and have too much glucose, sugars, carbohydrates floating through our bloodstream, it actually they attach themselves to our cells, to, in, in particular, our protein, and most of us is actually made out of protein. And then it causes something called glycation and glycation, advanced glycation and products, short ages. So it actually ages our cells. It's much as you can compare it to a burger being put on a grill and it gets all brown. The same thing happens to our cells if glucose attaches itself to our uh, protein and then we glycate. We don't want that. So keep being low carb overall is a good thing because there's less of that happening, meaning there's less cellular aging, there's less, there's less risk of wrinkles, things like that. Another benefit of intermittently being in ketosis is that my, our main ketone body called beta hydroxybutyrate has been shown to be, be linked to increased lifespan, health span, reduced risk of cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, things like that. And research thinks one of the mechanisms, other than the ones I spoke about before, is that it downregulates some, something called HDAC, which um, helps our body decide which genes to read and which ones to turn off. Now, we all have some good genes, some bad genes, and it depends much on how which ones are being turned on, which ones are being utilized whether we are having a health profile or whether we're turning down into illness where our cells aren't being um, read properly and not being renewed properly. Now, having beta hydroxybutyrate in our bloodstream has been shown to help that choice and our body to um, turn on the right genes more frequently than the the wrong gene. So that's a good thing. Another thing that has been shown um, what it does is that it increases our own antioxidant capacity. Now you might remember from before I said that if we are burning ketones for fuel in the mitochondria, we have we produce less free radicals, which is great in itself. But then on the in addition to that, we actually also make more antioxidants in the body. If we are in a keto state, if we have beta hydroxybutyrate in the body, if we have less of this HDAC in the body, and in particular, something called super um, oxide dismutase 2. Some of you might have heard of that if you've done your DNA testing, because a lot of people have a mutation there, so it doesn't work as well. So keto can help upregulate that. There are other antioxidants as well that have been shown to be upregulated. Same goes for NAD plus has been shown to be upregulated in a ketogenic, but also in a fasted state. And that helps to 
um, reduce cellular damage, increase cellular renewal. So it's an overall anti-aging great thing, preventative of all course, uh, course illness, mortality, morbidity, things like that. And lastly, being intermittently in a state of ketosis has also been shown to balance out our immune system and help our immune system be more resilient. So that's a good thing. It helps it be stronger to fight off viral infections. A lot of people have chronic viral lingering um, infections like Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus that actually constantly causes damage in, in our cells and has been linked to lots of ill health trajectories down the line if they stay there. Now, being in intermittent ketosis, same as intermittent fasting, has been shown to upregulate that and also calm down our immune system if it's overreactive such as found in autoimmune diseases, where our immune system is overreacting and um, that kind of attacking our own cells because it is for some reason thinking that it's just had enough and it wants to do more. Okay, so this all sounds wonderful. So you might like a lot of my patients, like myself as well, many years ago, I, we read all this research on ketosis, how great it is. So we just all jumped in. And as we, as humans, usually think, like I mentioned in the beginning, is we often think the more the better. So if something's great, doing more of it must be even better. But that is not the case with ketosis, same as goes with fasting and a lot of other things in our life, actually, in a healthy living. Now, there's a lot more research has been dedicated to this, a lot more time um, spent on looking into what happens if we overdo keto. Now, what I saw in my patients and also in myself is that if you overdo keto and you just stay in it, then you actually might mess up your hormones. Um, in particular, if women, um, it's a little bit, it happens quicker because our hormones are a little bit more, let's say, sensitive to fluctuations. Because our body usually thinks that we need to, before menopause, our body um, is very attuned to stressors that make us think that it's not safe to make a baby. And even though someone might not want to make a baby, maybe they've already had one, maybe they don't want them, maybe they're not there yet. Our cycle in the monthly cycle with our period, ovulation, that is a big indicator of our health. And our brain will have to signal to the body that it is safe to ovulate to then make progesterone in the second part of the cycle. Now, if we are fasting or in ketosis for too long, our body actually gets stressed out and thinks it's there's a threat. And then it will start to, the brain will start to signal to the ovaries to not ovulate. And then we don't have enough progesterone in the second part of the cycle. And that can reduce fertility, but it has other effects as well. Um, so that can lead to increased symptoms of anxiety, PMS, even cysts, fibroids, endometriosis. So we don't want that. And another thing that it does is that if we are going keto and fasting for too long, it can upregulate something called CYP17A1, which is an enzyme. And we want estrogen is really important because it makes our skin better, it makes our mood better, it makes our vagina um, all nice and lubricated, it increases our libido, but if we have too much of it, it is not a good thing. Increased estrogen or excess amounts of estrogen have been, they have similar um, symptoms to not enough progesterone because they have to be in a nice balance in that second part of the cycle. And if there's too much estrogen or not enough progesterone or enough progesterone, but just way too much estrogen, the symptoms are fairly similar and we just have too much growth, meaning there might be a higher risk of cysts, fibroids, endometriosis, but also our mood goes down, our metabolism goes down. So it's actually not a good thing. Now, um, another thing that can happen if we overdo keto is and I just mentioned it before, is that our body thinks we're running away from a tiger, it goes into that fight or flight mode. So they've done research where people that stay in a ketosis for too long continuously, their body actually shows the same signs and symptoms as chronic stress. Because when we are fasting or keto, our body thinks it's deprived of certain nutrients, which is good short term, makes us stronger, healthier. But if that stays for too long, it messes with our something called circadian rhythm, which is um, in the morning, we need to have a nice spike of cortisol so we can get out of bed, our system can get, can get running, and we are motivated, but then we want it to taper off throughout the day so that we can start to recover, regenerate, get a good night's sleep. It's kind of that 
balance between the fight or flight mode or the rest, digest and heal mode. We have these two, you might remember that from biology class called sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now both are important, but only in short amounts of times we want that sympathetic, that fight or flight, that running away from a tiger mode to be stimulated. And then we want it to taper off. Now, if we are in ketosis for too long, same as if we fast for too long, that gets upregulated. And if that's chronically upregulated, it just burns us out. It's the same as another stressor as if you're um, being in a, going through something stressful emotionally, the same thing happens if we're overdoing keto and fasting. Our body thinks it's, it's in danger and it will start to pump out cortisol and then it will start to deplete us. Now, another side effect of that could be that it, um, that we start to lower our thyroid function. And even though if, if we're doing intermittent ketosis and fasting, that's great. It's just, we get all stronger, but if we overdo it, it can slow down our thyroid quite a lot. Um, and then that can have symptoms like hair loss, brittle nails, getting cold, inability to shift weight. All of a sudden we're just getting chunkier. So it might make sense if that's you to check your thyroid hormones. Now, I mentioned in the beginning that if we are in intermittent ketosis, it increases our insulin sensitivity, which is great. That means that our cells respond to insulin when there's blood sugar in the body, our body makes insulin to take it into the cells and utilize for energy. Now, if that signaling works well, everything, everything is happy in the body. The brain is happy. Our cells are happy. Now, if there's a problem with that signaling, then this and there's something called insulin resistance, then we run into trouble. It's inflammatory, it's linked to all cause mortality, morbidity, Alzheimer's, increased abdominal fat, that visceral inflammatory fat, lots of other things, PCOS. Now, if we are in intermittent ketosis, the insulin sensitivity goes up, meaning that we're less insulin resistant. Great. Now, if we stay in it for too long, research shows that we actually contrary happens and our body actually becomes more insulin resistant, which is not a good thing. So then if we eat carbs, we, we can't, we don't know how to utilize it. So we want to make sure that we are in um, metabolically flexible, that our body can dip in and out of ketosis and that we can utilize any sugars or carbs we have in a good way without running into trouble there. Now, research also shows that staying in ketosis for too long can um, increase our risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Also not a good thing. The same as an alcoholic where our liver gets fatty, that can happen if we are in keto for too long. Um, and then also another thing that often gets missed and is really quite severe actually, is that if we are in keto for too long, it can damage our, potentially damage our heart cells. So there's research out of China that shows that people put on a ketogenic diet for longer term, their heart cells start to, to become fibrotic, meaning they're not functioning that well, the signaling doesn't work as well. So there's a higher risk of fibrillations. Um, so not that's not a good thing, you don't want that. And another thing is that there we are at a higher risk of micronutrient imbalances, especially also minerals, because we're peeing out all these things um, when we're in a ketogenic state that we actually need. So people can be too low in salt. People always think that we, we're too high in salt, but actually we need the right amount again. So all of it is about how much like the right dosing. We want some keto and fasting, but we don't want to overdo it. We want to dip in and out of it. We want to become metabolically flexible to be really healthy. And then another thing that can happen when we are in a when we overdo keto is that our gut microbiome can be imbalanced. Now, I again, I've seen this a lot in um, patients and in comments on my social media channels is that people go all they go all in on keto and they read somewhere that it doesn't matter what type of fats they eat and it doesn't matter um, what they eat in around of it as long as they keep their carb intake low and they're just having they're just eating fats now what that can do is initially it can actually help our um, if we have bloating from something called SIBO small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or candida going really low in fiber and um, plant matter can help that temporarily. But if we stay to stick to that for too long, so if we're not um, putting our keto diet together properly, then oftentimes we're not getting enough fiber into our gut. And then actually our good bacteria start to starve and our that can lead to inflammation. It can lead to our gut, gut lining become more 
um, permeable, also called leaky gut, and that can lead to higher risks of inflammation, food intolerances, allergies, bloating down the line. So actually it then throws it all off. It can also um, cause sticky stool, things like that. With the body all of a sudden, the gut doesn't work that well anymore. So we want to make sure that we formulate the keto diet right, so lots of vegetables, and also that we only stay in it intermittently. And lastly, another pitfall of overdoing keto can be that it, where I said before that keto can help with wrinkles and glycation, things like that, overdoing it can do the opposite because we actually need a little bit of glucose to make something called glucose aminoglycans, which are part of our connective tissue. All fancy words I know, but a lot of you might have heard about connective tissue by now. And it's basically tissue that connects everything. It's part of our skin, part of our joints, ligaments, tendons. It goes around muscles, through muscles, organs. And it just needs to be really nice and healthy so that we don't have wrinkles, joint aches, but also everything just functions well and the lymphatic system can go through, we can clean out um, debris, toxins. Now, if we don't have enough glucose because we're just constantly overdoing keto, then that can cause problems because we do need some of it to make these glucose aminoglycans and keep our joints healthy. So I hear from people that they all of a sudden start to have achy joints or that their skin gets all bad or their hair gets bad. So that can have to do with thyroid, but also with just not having the right building blocks. So it's all about getting a nice balanced um, diet, being metabolically flexible and doing it the right way. So don't overdo it, just incorporate it intermittently. Now, I hope you found this helpful and I am doing a four week reset on a regular basis for those of you that can't afford to work with a functional medicine practitioner one on one like me or someone else that is um, experienced in these topics. So in these four week resets, we come we basically talk about how to eat well, how to live, how to exercise, how to sleep, how to tweak fasting, keto, what kind of foods to implement for health optimization, prevention, um, how to basically live your best and healthiest life and prevent any decline, degeneration in the body as best as we can. So if you're interested in that, please um, email me or DM me. And I would also love your comments, how you like this, um, these series, these podcasts, because I would like to just bring more to you what you like. I love to read research and I want to empower you to become the CEO of your own health by having knowledge so that you can make choices rather than just doing something that you're not really sure about. You've read it somewhere on Dr. Google. Um, just comment below what you find helpful, what you're struggling with, and I will try and get to that as soon as I can. Um, all the best for now and I look forward to hearing from you soon.